darlings thank you so much for joining me on my channel today and today i have a verse map video for you i will be walking through how i verse mapped god's omnipresence which is the next uh attribute of god that i have on my list so just to show you i am using my favorite verse map journal which is my james method verse map journal in the front here and i have an affiliate link so i will list that below but in the front here um, it tells you how to use this journal and she really breaks down um, all of the instructions and how this is supposed to be used. And of course, this you can use however you'd like. It's a great journal, a great resource. Um, I really, really love her method. And for the most part, I stick true to the James method, but then some things I tweak to my style of um, Bible study. So this is definitely um, a journal that I would recommend. So in this page, so I have other verse maps over here, but this page, what I did was I glued in the attributes of God reading plan or verse map plan. And so on this side, what we have is the portions of scripture that you're gonna read, you have the attribute, and then you have the verse that you're gonna map. I really love this because you are reading the verse within context and doing your um, reading and study. Then you are basically meditating on that attribute and mapping the verse that matches the attribute. So I wanted to kind of explain that because I don't think I did that in my last other videos. If you miss my the other attributes that I have shown you guys that I have first map, I will link the um i actually will put at the end of this video i will actually put the playlist and i'll also link that playlist below okay so god's omnipresence so this one was based on first of kings chapter 8 verse 27 if you guys are looking at the artwork this is actually um this is all artwork from by the well for god and this sticky note where i added um, some extra just journaling or uh, like a quote from the Daily Grace Co. This is actually um, a post-it note also from By the Well for God from this kit. So if you are a By the Well for God um, girl and you shop them, you can use the stickers and the things that you get in your kit in other ways, not just with the kit. You can use them in other ways and that's kind of what I did here. So going over to the left-hand side, I'm just gonna push this over a bit. I have God's omnipresence. What I've been doing is I've been using a label, which is also from By the Well for God, um, adding the attribute and the verse that I'm focusing on. In the middle here, I go ahead and fill this out with the verse and I have it in the ESV version here and I have it over in the NLT translation in this section of translations. Sometimes I do multiple translations, sometimes I just do one. Um, so that's how I have it here. And I think if I don't, yeah, last month what I did was actually, I did a tr uh, second translation, but then I also did it in Spanish because if you guys did not know, I am um, Hispanic and um, I also study the Bible in Spanish, so. Just a little point there. Okay, so 1st of Kings 827 reads, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. So we are um, focusing on this verse. And what I did was I took out four different. And then as you can see, there's six different circles on the outside. So you can focus on six different words within the verse. But I chose to focus on just four. Um, and even with the four that I did, tons of information came from that. So um, I have the first one that I focused on was will dwell, which is actually a phrase. And so I highlighted that here in a sage green and I use the same one over here. This is kind of allowing me to tie that back. So I know this one goes with this one, the beige goes with this one, the pink one goes with this one, so on and so forth. Um, you could do that. You can also draw arrows. That's something that I've done in the past, past as well. And um, sometimes I just use a couple of colors like I did here. Um, so it just depends on how you want to do it yourself. So will dwell, right, is Strong's Concordance H3427, and it's to dwell, to remain, to sit, to abide, and to stay, okay? And then I also looked up heaven, which is Strong's Concordance H8064, and this is heaven's sky abode 
of the stars and atmosphere, okay? Then we have the H3557, uh, which is contain, and it's contain you. It's actually a phrase in the Hebrew word, and it's to seize, to contain, to measure, to sustain, to support, or to hold, right? And then we have Strong's Concordance H1004, which is house. And um, this is dwelling, um, habitation, shelter, abode, and place. I put a little note here to the side from Colossians 117. God is not limited by the time or space because God has created the universe. He is above all things and holds all things together. Colossians 117. I also have a quote from Isaac Newton. It says, he is not eternity and infinity, but eternal and infinite. He is not duration or space, but he endures and is present. So he is not these things, but he, so he is not these things, but these things basically he encompasses these things. And that's kind of hard to understand, but it's not, it's not an adjective to um, help describe him, but that is actually who he is, if that makes sense. Um, down here, we have context in this corner. We have who wrote it. It's actually anonymous. Um, when it's 560 to 550 BC, to whom? To the Hebrews that were in exile. And why? First and second of Kings were written to provide the Hebrew people in Babylon ex exile with a prophetic interpretation of their history. We have the other translation in the L NLT. It reads, but will God really live on earth? Why even the highest heavens cannot contain you? How much less this temple I have built? So now we're going over to the right-hand side. And here you're going to see cross-references, um, the view of God, view of man and self, reflection and application, and prayer. And I also have an extra sticky note here as well. So for cross-references, I did a little bit of note-taking and then a cross-reference verse to go with that. So omnipresence means all-present. This also means that he will always be with us. Isaiah 43, 2 um, kind of shows that. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will, be, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overcome you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. View of God. God both dwells, lives in heaven and within us. Through the Holy Spirit living in us, we can experience the indwelling the God that cannot be contained found a way to live among his people, first in a temporary tabernacle temple and then in our hearts when we became his temple. Now, this is a quote from David Guzik that I found as I was going through the Blue Letter Bible app. I love to go into the commentary section and kind of see some more information. And so I pulled this one out. It says, though God had a special presence in the temple, he was far too great to be restricted to the temple. So that just talks about how great God is, right? Even in his omnipresence, you know, he we think about it, he's not constricted or restricted by any time or space or being present in one place, but he exists outside and even within that at the same time, simultaneously. Reflection and application Although God cannot be truly downsized to a building, he has chosen to live within and dwell in us. Wow, God. In God's omnipresence, he can be present in heaven, in Shoal, or in me all at the same time. He is ever present, and that means he can be counted on. If I were to be anywhere on, over, or under earth, he is as much there as he is on his throne. That was kind of like my... Um, reflection and application after all of this. Then I had a prayer and I added this sticky note with this from the Daily Grace Co. that talks about God's omnipresence. And I actually got this um, from the Daily Grace Co. handbook and I believe it was the theology one if I'm not mistaken. It says, I am still asking the Lord to show me what it looks like to be comforted by his presence. Lord, teach me that I'm never away from you because you are never away from me. So this is actually from the podcast. I just remembered right now. Just a tidbit of 
how you know that we can be comforted by his presence. And sometimes we feel alone, right? But we need to know that our God, he has omnipresence, right? He is present at all times. He has never left us. And that should comfort us. He's never away from us and we are never away from him. So that wraps up omnipresence. And I, again, I continue to say this. I am continuing to enjoy verse mapping through the attributes of God. And I love seeing how the ladies share that over in the Facebook group for the James Method. Again, if you are interested in this notebook, um, I do have a affiliate link for this. So I'm going to go ahead and list that below. She, This is binded in this way, kind of like a book binding. But she also has spiral bind, binded ones, which are also perfect and even better because you can kind of flip them on themselves. I'm waiting to fill this one up to grab one of those, but I will link that below just in case you want to shop. So thank you so much for joining me each and every video, darlings. God bless. Bye.